For this character, I set out to create a pregnant female who has been shunned aside by her tribe. In Assyro Babylonian mythology, the celestial king Marduk slaughters the serpent Tiamat, the feminine principle of chaos, and divides her enormous corpse. From one half, Marduk constructs the vault of heaven, from the other, the solid earth. This inspired me to create a tribe loosely based on this myth for a new world. A man claiming to be a descendant of the celestial king Marduk hounds desperate survivors into a search for the feminine reincarnation of chaos. Marduk preaches of a woman so ferocious and strong that her corpse could be used to will planet earth back to life. As his vague goose chase leads to doubt within his camp, Marduk assigns a new task to his confused company. Give birth to the fabled goddess. Once he sacrifices her to the tattered ground, the mother shall receive royal positioning to command the new world. I see this character as someone who followed this order. She fell pregnant, but through some sort of selection process, it was decided by the leader that her baby was not, in fact, the reincarnation of Tiamat. How could somebody decide such a thing? It seems to me that the leader would be sweating, trying to figure out new ways to keep his followers under his lead. Would encouraging the endless birth of children within his faction allow for a constant inflow of new followers? I add some sort of attachment to her belly. This indicates she is not the carrier of Tiamat. The skull on the end of this attachment has a cross painted onto it. Doing so hopefully indicates to the viewer and her tribe that she has failed her task. I want her mood to be disgruntled. She desperately follows her leader's wishes, only to be told she's not the chosen one. Now she is forced to wear her humiliating reminder of her supposed failure. I look at the clothing that Zulu women wear. Only the headpiece acts as a clue to this. I find myself interested in symbols of femininity. Here is an extract from Jack Tresseter's books, Symbols and Their Meanings. The female principle is graphically represented in iconography most directly by the lozenge, a symbol of the life matrix, the villa, fertility, and in some contexts, innocence. It takes on dual imagery when combined with the phallic symbolism of snakes in Native America decorative art. A less direct symbol of the vulva, widely popular in art, is the shell. An auspicious, erotic, lunar and feminine emblem linked with conception, regeneration, baptism and in many traditions, prosperity, probably through its association. I take into account the lozenge and shell shape. On her right shoulder is a small diamond shape. More of these shapes are later added to her headpiece. Also attached to the headpiece is a seashell. While I myself may see these in the character's design, are they readable to anyone else viewing the character? Do these shapes need to be directly viewable, or should they be taken in subliminally? Does it even particularly matter? Is representing the gender of a character more likely to be readable when you add defining physical attributes? Symbols such as the lozenge and shell could be essential to a character's design if you allow them to appear androgynous. I think in the case of this design though, it is more important to render symbols that are relevant to the tribe's beliefs. Doing so will allow me to clarify her alignment not only to myself, but to the viewer as well.